Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on, let's go. So this one's going to be about Jennifer Weiselberg. Jennifer Weiselberg. Um, who is Jennifer Weiselberg? She's been in the news. She's a former, former ballet dancer and choreographer, uh, best known for serving as a whistleblower against number 45. So in 2004, she married Barry Weiselberg. He's the son of Alan Weiselberg, and that's Trump's chief uh, financial officer forever. Um, in 2004 also, Jennifer described a shiva, seven days of mourning, uh, for Barry's, uh, Barry Weiselberg's grandmother, where Trump uh, was there. He was showing men pictures of himself posed with naked models on a yacht at a shiva he was showing this uh, she said trump made sexual advances on her in front of her um future father-in-law okay alan weiselberg and then um even though he knew uh, she was engaged trump did that uh, now barry who was her fiance uh, also worked for trump managing all of his uh, ice skating rinks in the new york city uh, area so when they married they moved into a desirable apartment it says in downtown manhattan that overlooked uh, central park and she was told it was a wedding gift, um, but she learned later that um, Trump's accounting showed that the gift uh, was a business expense, not a personal gift. And I guess that was discovered maybe during the divorce, divorce uh, proceedings, I would imagine. If the apartment had been listed as a business expense, the Barry, uh, Barry Weiselberg would have had an obligation to list it on his tax returns, and uh, presumably that wasn't done. So journalists uh, sus uh, suspect that uh, District Attorney Cyrus Vance Jr. plans to use this impropriety as a leverage to get Barry and Alan Weiselberg to agree to a plea deal where they testify against 45. They paid, being Jennifer and Barry Weiselberg after they got married, they paid no rent for the apartment, but they did pay about 400 a month in utilities. Um, Bloomberg News calculated that they would have uh, paid hundreds of thousands of dollars of rent uh, if market rent were charged during the years they lived there. And apparently they lived there in 14 years. In 2014, the apartment was sold for almost $3 million and the apartment's current owners rented out for $7,000 a month. So that's what's going on there. Now, Barry Weiselberg worked for um, Donald Trump in the uh, managing the ice rinks. And that is kind of an interesting story too, so I'll tell it really quickly. So Woolman Rink, the major rink, I suppose, in, in um, Central Park. So Woolman Rink is a public ice rink in the southern part of Central Park, uh, Manhattan. It's named after the Woolman family who donated the funds for its original construction, Wiki says. And uh, in 1949, when all this started, the philanthropist uh, Kate Woolman donated $600,000, which is about $6 million today, for the rink's construction to commemorate her family. And um, she is also happened to be the great aunt of Henry and Richard Block, co-founders of H&R Block. So interesting. Now, in 1950, Woolman Park did open. In 1957, in the summer, it hosted a series of jazz, uh, Under the Stars uh, concerts, uh, Billie Holiday, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Buddy Rich, and uh, you know lots of others. And then 1966 to 1980, uh, the summer, had, there were summer music festivals where there were 30 to 50 concerts each summer. Uh, at the rink featuring, so some of the names were Jimi Hendrix, the Jimi Hendrix Experience, The Who, uh, Led Zeppelin, The Beach Boys, and The Supremes, and, and I mean a lot more. Then in 1974, the city, uh, New York City Parks and Recreation Department started planning a renovation of the rink. Uh, finally, in the winter of 1980, the rink had to be closed when the court concrete floor actually buckled. Then, uh, planning errors and construction mishaps and flooding by heavy rains, all of that held it all up until finally Trump then offered then Mayor Ed Koch uh, to rebuild uh, the rink at Trump's expense within six months. And in return, uh, he would take the leases to operate the rink and the adjacent uh, restaurant uh, in order to recoup his costs. So he made a deal. And the final agreement was that the city would uh, reimburse Trump for the costs up to the agreed limit and that he would donate the profits of the rink and restaurant to charity and public works. Hmm. So someone should check that out. Then uh, Trump, uh, when he started uh, the project, he asked his contractors to also do the work without making a profit, promising them, you know, publicity for not, uh, you know, for everything they did. But then he didn't mention their contributions at the uh, press uh, afterwards. So, but the work was completed two months ahead of schedule and uh, $750,000 under the estimated costs. And then as part of the, uh, I'm sure lots of folks didn't get paid. As part of the agreement to keep uh, operating Woman Park, Trump agreed to take 
a concession for Lasker Park rink as well, which is also in Central Park. So now it's two rinks and um, in the restaurant. In 1986, when the rink reopened, ticket, ticket prices were raised and attendance was up. And the Trump Organization donated, it says here, Wiki says, Don't, Trump Organization donated most of the profit to public works and charity, and among them United Cerebral Palsy, Partnership for the Homeless, Gay Men's Health Crisis. So the Trump Organization held the concession that I held you in suspense until 1995. And then Trump, uh, the Trump Org six subsidiary is Woolman Rink Operations LLC, who won another contract in 2001 to operate the rink through uh, 2021. Then uh, Woolman Rink uh, Operations uh, is owned by DJT Holdings, Donald J. Trump, you think? DJT Holdings LLC, which is owned by the Donald J. Trump Revocable Trust for the duration, or was for the duration, I presume it's not anymore, of uh, his presidency. Now, current day, just three sentences. In 2019, Trump's name was removed from both Woolman and Lasker ranks. In 2021, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio severed all contracts with the Trump org, citing involvement in the storming of the United States Capitol. And uh, however, later the city uh, decided to retain Trump org for the duration of the uh, skating season. So two pages, and now we'll do the cards. Thought it was interesting. Okay, so Jennifer Weiselberg, Jennifer Weiselberg. So I got this, uh, actually I just got these cards. This is the Grand Lux Tarot by Cairo Marchetti. And um, so these should be fun to use. I actually had them out of the box today and then shuffle them around a little bit to kind of get them limbered up. And um, they're nice cards. So it's got a, a nice uh, black and white guidebook that comes in with it. I really haven't even looked at it yet. I looked through the cards individually to see um, how they look and uh, they're pretty interesting i've shuffled them up lots and uh tried to get some energy into them so jennifer weiselberg what in the world so she was married for 14 years presumably she has kids ballerina ballet dancer um maybe i don't know she looks like she's 40 ish something these are nice cards uh like i said i looked through them quickly and they this digital designs the only thing i'll say about these cards is that these are really white cards i mean i found one black face in these cards somewhere it was a king of something uh, but everything i mean these are very caucasian cards so you know i didn't realize that when i bought them i used to try to get something that looks more like what uh, life looks like but uh, that doesn't always happen but they are nicely done they're nice looking cards and wow they're still kind of stuck to each other because they're so uh, new now they got an interesting back on them too so kind of a joker or a jester kind of a thing going on there and um, so we'll give them a few more shuffles up. I have shuffled them without you knowing it. Secretly behind your back. Now Jennifer Weiselberg. So apparently Trump hit on her at Grandma's Shiva. So that's class. With with photos of naked women and him on a yacht. And uh, when was that? That was 2004. So that's not something he just learned in 2004. That was something that by 2004. He was very comfortable doing anywhere in any way he pleased. But you know what? I don't want to make this about Donald Trump. So let's cut these cards and try to refocus this on Jennifer Weiselberg. Jennifer Weiselberg. Jennifer, 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 Jennifer. What, what, what? What do you know, Jennifer? Can you, is it more than just this... Um, this, t this fraud, this tax fraud, business fraud, whatever you want to call it, uh, that'll obviously be there because I'm sure who was claiming it? Um, was, it was the Trump Award claiming the property? Who knows? So Jennifer Weiselberg, trying to get your kids, right? Is that what I understand? What do you know? What can you tell us about all of this, Jen? Okay, we're going to go for it. Okay, first time I've used these cards. Jennifer Weiselberg. We're going to do six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put these guys away for a little bit later. And we'll see how all this goes. Jennifer Weiselberg, what is the signifier card for you, dear? And this is the Knight of Cups. Let me take a minute to look at this and then I'll bring it up to the camera a little bit closer. So, you know, cups are all about emotions and passion. 
and moving things along from a from an inner spirit kind of a way. This night is very much wrapped up in the ocean. We've got a couple of beautiful swordfish here leaping out uh, from this ocean of, of passion. So are you the knight of passion, uh, Jennifer Weisberg, or were you just a knight of passion? <laughs> so we'll see. That's what Trump wanted anyway, a knight of passion. What was going on 14 years ago? What was that? So the signifier is the knight. So the knight is the uh, one of the uh, important court cards. So the knight would be the one fighting for the king and the queen. This is challenged by huh, the six of swords, which is moving on, moving out of troubled waters. And, you know, typically this six of swords shows us um, with the swords in the, the boat of protecting uh, the people, but these swords are actually obstacles outside that they're going to have to maneuver around. And so this knight of passion, Jennifer, is challenged by all these uh, difficult situations she's going to have to uh, maneuver right now, I'm sure. So that's the six of swords. The base of that reading then is going to be the four of swords. And the four of swords uh, is, always tells us to take a break, take a rest, and get a moment in it. It's funny that in this four of swords, we also happen to see a knight uh, in a blue uh, steed. So, yeah, I would say the base of this reading is that the best thing she can do is just to take her time and take it very slowly. Okay? Now, the and my uh, laptop is trying to talk to me. It's detecting my voice like a pet. So, uh, in the past uh, of this uh, reading for Jennifer Weiselberg is the Five of Wands. And, you know, this is always kind of a little struggle, endless little uh, battles within and um, annoyances. And so she is in the process right now of uh, a divorce and I believe trying to decide who gets the kids uh, with Barry. So that's what's uh, been going on. In the sky for this reading then is the Three of Coins. And the Three of Coins is working together to try to, to uh, make something that can be uh, you know, presented to the public. Uh, so this, this fellow here is working on these three coins. He's got the plans in front of him. He's diligently uh, trying to get it right. And uh, I would say that's uh, Jennifer Weiselberg's life in a lot of ways. She's trying to figure out how to get the kids um, and with the cherry on top of see if she can screw Trump in the meantime, and uh, which wouldn't be good for the Weiselberg family either. So uh, hell hath no fury, they say, as a woman scorned. So now the uh, near outcome of this is going to be very fruitful for Jennifer, it looks like to me, the empress. And uh, this empress has come out of this with everything she wants. She's got baby in arms. It's in a beautiful garden. She's in paradise. And that's what the near outcome looks like for Jennifer in the six, the six card part of this uh, Celtic cross. So that's pretty good. So let's see. Let's zero down on Jennifer right now. Let's try to get into her brain. What's going on for you right now, Jennifer Weiselberg? And this is the page of swords. Wow. This page to me looks like her. I mean, this page looks like he's bringing vengeance forward. Uh, I hate to say it, but that's exactly uh, what I get out of that. So the self right now is the page bringing to the court uh, what they know and uh, for, for a stab. Okay. Now the environment that that's in then is the queen of wands. And the queen of wands is getting things moving, making a motion, uh, putting something into, into, uh, into getting a plan into movement. And so the queen of wands absolutely knows what they're doing. And that's uh, what the environment is for this page uh, with a dagger to give a jab. The hopes and the fears for this, then, is the High Priestess. And the High Priestess is, um, comes to us with all the knowledge that she needs to, to make this work. And uh, I would say that's the hope uh, of, of her, that all of this comes together in exactly the way that it has to. And then the um, near and then the, the, the final outcome for all of this, then, is going to be strength. Look at that. So Jennifer Weiselberg grows up and grows a pair. I mean, she gets her strength, and uh, she'll come out of this as one of the uh, the heroines in this uh, ugly saga that we've been living through. So that's what it looks like to me. Well, that was a pretty cool reading for Jennifer Weiselberg. I didn't expect that much out of a ballerina, um, but um, yeah. So she comes through it uh, with strength in the end, and uh, even in the first part of that. Uh, Celtic cross that six card part she came out uh, all fruitful and with her babies so it looks good to me for Jennifer maybe not so good for the Weiselbergs and the Trumps I'm guessing 
Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I hope you had a fun time. I did. First time with these cards. And uh, come on back tomorrow. I'll be here. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.